people always knew around the same time we were going to have approval of SEC and the having. So, you know, maybe that's all sort of priced in. Um, and then I think the broader, which, I mean, this will tie into, our, um, I think, what we'll talk about with with the macroeconomic environment with inflation and the in the Fed, there was a, and still is a belief that, you know, rates are going to come down and so money goes back into higher risk uh, assets. Obviously, yeah. this last week has shown that maybe that's not going to come as soon as we think. Right. Um, but I think those factors have really tied in, uh, tied into it. And just broadly as, you know, just the cycle of the market, there's like people got, I think, got out of the market. People that are building stuff using blockchain tech are have been building. Things are slowly moving on, on that side of things, too. Right. Absolutely. You you bring up a lot of good points and you, you spoke about the crypto ETF. So this is um, BitB, which is like the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF. I know there's mm-hmm. ARC, like the ARC ETF, mm-hmm. but all these things are up um, from their listing price, which they listed at like this ARC B listed at like $50. It's up to 70. So all these ETFs and I'm not really sure. So I don't know if you know how these ETFs work, but I think it's that they just kind of does the amount of Bitcoin that they own go up like do they keep buying more as yeah, they- I, I, I i think it's essentially yeah people like as people f- buy the etfs they're like buying bitcoin to match that i guess okay gotcha um okay. so it's like deposits that they're getting they're taking in yeah and i guess they're okay that yeah. makes sense and it's obviously like complicated because then right. you know, the etfs taking fees and it's not right they're managing it also yeah. like the weird like you're not exactly tied to the price of bitcoin but you are uh, you can say right. okay bitcoin's down a little bit the right. ETF's down but i guess you also have it's interesting because you have the actual you know price of bitcoin which is what you're tracking but then within the etf i guess like the sort of supply and demand relation you know dynamics there is is kind of interesting right. etf are fucking confusing yeah they, they're they're not it's easy to, to understand um yeah they're weird but um this grayscale i know this gbt gbtc has been around for a while yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and i think this is i think this was this like the first bitcoin etf i think yeah one of the first yeah this whole company grayscale i think is circulated around building these kind of right um, these ETFs. i guess it wasn't technically an etf i think it was originally like, like a company that oh yeah, yeah. I trust that just yeah. like owned bitcoin and right um so yeah. then there's this um, micro strategy, which mm. I'm sure you've you've, um, yeah. you've heard of after this crazy move. Um, and this thing is like impossible to trade because um, the markets are extremely wide and there's a ton of call skew um, as far as trading the options. But this thing has had quite a run. And this, uh, I think they came out with news yesterday or the day before that they're um, they're like taking out a loan to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. It was like 500 million or something like that. That boy, Michael Saylor loves fucking Bitcoin. Yeah, it's it's insane. They, yeah, raising 500 million in convertible bonds. Yeah. Well, it, it, well it's crazy because like they're, they're a fucking software company. Like, yeah, yeah. They're just like a software company and then now have a balance, you know, $15 billion of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So I think that's what makes it a weird thing to, to, to trade as well it's like yeah you're you're uh you know you have earnings and you're a software company but then you also have bitcoin and a lot of it uh, yeah so like i'm looking here this is the website yeah. it looks like they do whatever ai powered apps um to, like i don't see anything related to bitcoin yeah. so is this like Maybe this is one of those like um, you remember the dot com bubble, or you know, yeah. people would rename their name and then they put yeah. like dot com at the end to yeah. like to it's get. Like, their, what's with AI now? It's everything done. Yeah, AI. exactly. Um, like there's that company that that their ticker is AI, and this thing had a run it was kind of daily. I mean, they they've been around. They were founded yeah. in 1989. Micro strategy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so oh, yeah. like they've been a software company, went well, public. You know, a billion dollars. Oh, they so company. they they lived through the dot com. Oh yeah. So they were here. I mean, you yeah, can yeah, see them. They've been around. Like they, and then they were just kind of like, I, I don't know, Michael Saylor, oh, four, five, five, six years ago, was just like, Bitcoin is the Bitcoin. truth. And just started nipping it up into that shit. So, so what happens when, you know, if we see a, a dip in Bitcoin or we see a, like a little pullback, would you guess, like, let's say this having, 
you know, happens and then we see, you know, people selling the news type of thing. Could this thing be back at like 600? You know, could this be like more than... Yeah, this is, I mean, what, this growth is in a month? This is in, so this is a daily chart. So let's see, like, if we go to like a monthly candle, this thing is up. I mean, two months. So look at that. This yeah. year, on the year, this, this is crazy. They're yeah. at what? What were they at going into the year? Five? I can't see that. Uh, let Five me see. Seconds? So this is uh, four. Where were they going into the year? They were 690. Right here. This is January. So they open at like 690. Now they're up to. So they're up 136% year to date. Wow. Let me zoom in here. Um, which is. Yeah, quite a bit. And for a company that, <laughs> like you said, I mean, they do software. I guess they have the AI. <laughs> they have the AI, you know, uh, and Bitcoin. Um, it's probably day, what is this, day two of being red after this yeah. long rally? Pulling out a little bit, needs that. Sitting around sitting around 70K range. We'll, yeah. we'll see what happens there. But I know you're, you did. you're more of a crypto guy than I am, right? I, yeah, I am a, a pretty good, pretty big crypto guy, I'd say. Um, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I was I was on stream with James on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. and I just like bought my first like few coins on on like Monday or something, or maybe it was mm. last. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll, I, I can show you what I bought, or I can tell you're, you. You're the reason. You're the reason we're having this little spike in crypto. Exactly. People, exactly. like, like, people, people like me, they're just jumping in. They yeah. have no idea what they're doing. I'm just buying these random coins. And you can tell me if I if the ones that I bought are good or, or they're shit and I should get rid of them. But um, we can talk about that later. Oh, yeah. Let's do um, it. Ethereum down three, almost three and a half percent. Um, also come down a little bit. It hasn't, hasn't been able to break 4K. Or, or yeah. I guess a little bit, a little bit. It's but. gotten, uh, let's see what this says here on the high. I think the high yesterday was... 4087 so we touched it well yeah haven't really broken through and then we haven't really broken it and then oh, have we ever been to 4k yeah we that have. 40 yeah little, almost five Middle five okay so we, we it's interesting bitcoin all-time highs typically all the all their altcoins sort of lag a little bit which we have seen yeah. here um but i think it'll be interesting to see like the the rate of change sort of i don't think i don't know obviously as as bitcoin becomes a bigger asset you know it's not going to move in as large of moves as uh, smaller i mean even ethereum's you know right behind it but i right. think uh we'll see more kind of acceleration in, in ethereum and even still the, these other kind of like big what you would consider blue chip cryptos that aren't bitcoin but we'll see what happens hasn't hit all-time highs yet bitcoin has yep. broken through that so We'll see what happens. Are you, are you still buying? Would you, because, you know, I get a lot of questions um, about crypto, even though I think people just think that I trade that I know about crypto, yeah, but I really yeah. don't. And um, they're always asking me, like, you know, what should I do with my Bitcoin? I'm like, I'm the wrong guy to ask. But if I were to tell them, you know, from looking at a chart like this, you know, I wouldn't be telling anybody to buy here i don't know if you you're more you know yeah i so personally i've been just sort of dollar cost averaging crypto the last two and a half years i don't have any more dollars to average um <laughs> which i suppose it's good timing yeah. um i i don't know if if i had the capital to keep buying more i'm, I'm not uh, maybe i would i'm not sure if i would i do think there's still uh, like i mean we've just hit all-time highs yeah a bit, bit of a pullback, but we've got a lot of room to run. I'm, I'm not touching my portfolio yet. Um, if you look at, you know, the broader, even, yeah, like every, you know, I mean, every cycle, you, you're going to hit yeah. the all time highs and then go from there. I think that's what we're going to see happen. I don't really know the time frame. It's a volatile asset class. So that's why I'm kind of just dollar cost averaging and uh, we'll see what happens. I, I wouldn't say it's too late to get in. Um, yeah. You know, you should have got in earlier but it's not a bad time to get in i think at all that is my opinion of course um yeah. and again i can see a little bit of a pullback um we've seen that past cycles like hit the all-time high and and a very big pullback um so that's why i would dollar cost average um i know like ivan ivan trades a little bit more on the short term right well, um but yeah i mean and i mean you see this just it's, green, green, green. I'm, it's, you know, we'll yeah. cool off a little bit. So the last 
So I know we have the having coming up in about what is it like thirty days or something yeah. like that. So, because I I've you know started look to look more into the having and like Bitcoin and all this you know crypto stuff. Even though even though I'm you know I'm not going to trade it. It's something I would just buy and kind of hold on to. But um, if we go back to the last one, which I think was twenty was it twenty twenty April twenty twenty. Yeah. So if we look at like April twenty twenty, which was you know around the time when COVID started, so it might be a little, right. um, you know, biased towards that. But we did get quite a run. Obviously, everybody remembers the run of 2021 where um, we hit about 60K and then um, and then again, we hit like 70, was it like 70K in like November? Um, and that was after the halving. And now we're getting, you know, I feel like the difference with this rally is that we're, that we're getting it before the halving has even started. So I'm yeah. thinking like, is this movement is this move that we're seeing here you know up from you know this year let's call it we're up from like 30 30 thousand so we're up almost like you know more than 100 percent is this move that we're seeing um like buying the hype of the having or are we going to continue to see a move like this after the having actually happens i i think so Bitcoin, like the halving's a, a very important factor, but there's also always been like macro factors that obviously COVID, you know, QE, um, a lot of easy money, money going into high risk assets. I think at the same time here, you have the, the biggest event that just, you know, started, maybe you could call it the, the, the run of the bull market was obviously the Bitcoin ETFs and just because yeah. now you have institutional investors able to buy this asset um i think that's the huge macro move that like really started started this kind of movement I, but 